welcome to the Gibbs Cam 2016 training video. Today we're going to learn a little bit about adaptive pocketing. Now adaptive pocketing has been in there for a while and we're just going to show you um, what it is in 2016. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up my part. And here I have a pocket with uh, a number of fillets number of different features in there an excellent part for adaptive pocketing the tool I'm going to use today is just a standard half inch end mill no corner radius on there just a half inch end mill with uh, uh, long enough flutes in there it is a fairly large part about 18 inches by uh, 11 12 inches and about four and a half inches thick so my process we're going to use is advanced 3D machining along with my tool and here you can see we're going to go to adaptive pocketing it's the third one down and the first thing I'm going to do is click on restore defaults that will set the defaults for this part because it's looking at the solid as well as the tool and it'll set most of the defaults uh, correctly. Uh, you can do some refinement, but uh, for the most part, it, uh, it sets them really well for parts like this. Of course, your feeds and speeds. And I like to use the high, use high feed. This will eliminate G0 moves because G0 moves are not really predictable in any machine. Every machine's a little bit different on how it gets from one point to another in a rapid move. So by eliminating the G0s, it's a, a better predictive moves in a straight line. Here I'm going to leave about 30 thousandths for stock. This will leave stock everywhere on the inside as well as the floors. And I'm just going to use the defaults here, the step over here, um, optimal step over and the maximum step over. I'm just going to leave it at 100, uh, 180 thou. Cutting tolerance, 1 thousandths there. We don't need a real... Uh, tight tolerance on here since we're just roughing this out if you uh, put a higher uh, smaller tolerance in there it's just going to take longer to cut and it's really not going to take uh, any advantage in machining I am going to click on this clear center first and that's going to give us four choices down there the minimum radius three quarter inch that's the distance from the um, center central incision to the outer edge of the pocket must be no smaller than this okay then the next one the minimum angle that's the angle between the central incision and the pocket boundary must be no smaller than this value and of course the minimum uh, offset 0.275 that's the width of the central incision must be no smaller than this and maximum uh, the same value is there that's the width of the central incision must be no larger than this okay I'm going to wrap it to point one because the top of our material is zero and I'm just going to put in zero there or you could alt click uh, the top of your part now I want to see how deep I'm going to go here so I'm going to highlight this box here hold the alt key down and I'm going to click here and you can see it's 2 and 362 down here it's about 2 and 952 and down here minus 3.346 so this is pretty much the deepest cavity I'm gonna go I'm just gonna round this off a little bit deeper make sure we get anything that's I might have missed if there was something a little bit deeper on here so I'm just gonna go minus 3.350 now on the maximum Z step you can change that as well to whatever you like but I'm gonna stay with about 40 thousandths on my maximum Z step and my fine Z step I'm gonna say 10 thousandths and that will uh, vary according to what it's machining for like fillets and things like that it's going to jump down to the finer Z step so you don't have large steps in here when you go in to uh, maybe take your finish pass or maybe you just want to use this for the finish pass we're going to machine the cavities so this is going to uh, machine cavities and this is what we have here as well and the clear center first just to let you know is starting in the center and cutting outside the mill feature tab we're going to leave that as it is options we're going to leave that as it is 
entry and exit, same there. And the boundary, we're going to leave this as well, defaults there. So we're just going to go back to my isometric view. And we're going to click on the whole solid, and we're going to click on do it. Now normally this will take about three to four minutes to run, uh, probably a little bit faster if I wasn't recording this, but uh, we're just going to let this run, and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as the toolpath is finished. Okay, we are finished now, and as you can see, this took about three minutes and 41 seconds to complete. Nice toolpath here. And now we're going to do cut part render on here. So I'm going to turn my cut part render on. Just rewind it here and play. And as you can see, it's going to do a helix on this entry here. And it might vary between a helix and a ramp in, depending on uh, what part of the cavity it's doing. But you're never going to plunge the end mill into the material in a Z move and break your end mill. This is uh, adaptive pocketing here and does a very nice job. We'll speed this up here. And like adaptive pocketing does, it'll use 40 thousandths for most of the cavity here, but when it gets to radiuses, it'll automatically adapt to that and move it the Z step down to 10 thousandths and reduce the the large steps that you would normally have on uh, pocketing. So you can come back and finish it if you like. We're going to speed this up a little bit just so you can see uh, some of the final finishes on here. Move this around just a bit so you can get a little bit better idea of the cavity here. And here we have our finished toolpath here. So if you look at this, you can see we have very nice small steps in the fillets there larger steps on the flats when it gets to the flats but very nice tool path for this type of cavity 3d cavities and such on here thanks for watching this video